Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Now, there's a lot of news in the Big Four Accounting Firms lately, uh, mainly around <laughs> bank collapses. But before that, um, there was some pretty big news regarding ENY and their split being halted. Um, or the, those are the rumors. Uh, there's other there's other things that are going around that counteract the rumors, namely that the CEO said that this, the deal was still going through. But there, there are rumors that the split of e and is being delayed. Um, and there's various rumors as to why. And one of the main ones is that the tax partners in the U.S. are confused or hesitant signing off until they figure out what's going to happen to them. And it's really because the, the tax department of any big four accounting firm is, it's really hard to figure out where they're going to go because they, they touch so many areas. And so I could see how that some partners would be hesitant for that. But I also don't believe too much of this stuff because these partners are going to receive a big payoff at some point. And so the fact that they're not going to, or the, the rumor that they're not going to sign off on this, I don't, I don't believe is true. Just a matter of time. And the U.S. CEO and the global CEO of EOI were pitted against each other because they're both going to be the CEOs of the, the future firms that split off. And so they didn't get to the positions where they were by being pushovers and just giving up. They got there because they're very highly political and they can call in favors. And that's just the way the big four are. You don't, you don't, the big four is just one big political machine. And in my view, there's, there's not really much that, that else that gets done other than, you know, there, there is some value add work that gets done in the big four accounting firms, but most of your time in the big four is political and it's, you know, charging time, managing engagements, trying not to lose clients. And so much of it is admin. And to me, admin is political and to move up, you have to be highly political. And it's not the, the people that are the best at the work and the most technical aren't the people at the top of the big four accounting firms. People at the top big four accounting firms are the political people. And so to think that that this that they're not going to be able to muster their support uh, to me is I don't think is going to happen. I think they're going to go through with this deal, and it's just a matter of time. And it's funny because this whole E and Y split up going bad came out at the exact same time as the CEO of, of Deloitte came out and said that he thinks splitting up is a bad idea and Deloitte's not going to do it because, you know, he, he has a better view on firm splitting up. And he says this has happened before and it wasn't successful. But I'm pretty sure it was successful. There's, you know, the Accenture got created out of that. But I, I think he's trying to use the EOI's previous split and, you know, PwC splitting off theirs as the example. But... Um, it's kind of funny too, because the, you know, this bank run, uh, it's going in the market going bad right now overall. I mean, the market's been doing somewhat decent in the past few weeks, but the bank run sort of caused a lot of, is causing a lot of issues along with a lot of layoffs going around and a lot of layoffs are in the tech industry and, and I think consulting is going to suffer a lot this year. And I, in my opinion, I think maybe not this fiscal year for Deloitte, but the next fiscal year for Deloitte is going to be brutal because the they're so focused on consulting that I think they're going to be impacted by this downturn in the economy and companies cutting costs. And another reason why I think it's really funny that Deloitte is, is saying that they're high and mighty, you know, they... They don't believe in the splitting up. Well, the reason Deloitte would never split up is because their audit practice is so small. So they don't have a big enough 
hard at practice to even split off to be worth anything. Um, or they're, you know, the, the audit partner were really just riding along with the consulting firm. So I don't, it, it's funny that he's doing that. He's playing politics. I'm sure, you know, he had a hand in spreading these rumors too, but, or that's just my guess. And it's going to be funny when, when the, to, to see Deloitte's results and see how they feel about, you know, being so consulting focused. And I, I think it's, it, it's come and go with consulting. There's, you know, it's, it's feast and famine. And I think that's, what's going to, what's going to happen. And for Ian Y to split up right now, is it's going to it's going to IPO into a tough market, and especially these next few months and the next year is going to it's going to be really interesting to see where things land because liquidity is quickly drying up in the market. But you know why it could benefit if central banks around the world start infusing a bunch of capital, because you know we're going to go from trying to control inflation to potentially hyperinflation around the world and if you're trying to ipo you would try to ipo right around when all these central banks are going to inject liquidity to try and save these banks that would be the optimal time um but also like if ny hits on the other side where you know liquidity starts drying up that's not when you want to ipo i think there's there's a lot more that'll impact the ny split than um than just saying that it's not a good thing to do or that the tax the tax partners are hesitant. I think there's a lot more to that. I think people are worried about IPOing into this market. It could also another thing that to me is that the younger partners might be hesitant because they're most likely going to receive the lowest payout. Um their future is going to be a lot more confusing. Um but it, it could be the older partners too, because for younger partners, they'll receive a one time large payout at the beginning of their career. Um, so it might be easy for them, but the older partners, maybe there's something regarding the pensions that, that isn't too clear. Um, you know, there, there could be a number of things holding this thing back. And I think that, you know, why they did just pull this thing up and they're trying to push it through. And I'm sure there's just a lot of people that are really confused as to what's going to happen. And I'm sure that the EY is just trying to high level it. Like all big four accounts try to high level everything. And then there's a lot of hesitation around the board, but it seems like the U S and the UK for EY are really going to determine where this thing goes. Um, and another thing too, that the Deloitte CEO said was that he doesn't think regulation uh, regulation is a big deal, but EY is facing, um, you know, tons of scrutiny in the UK over, you know, their audits. And then KPMG in the US is facing tons of scrutiny over their audits of these banks now. So it was hilarious. This Deloitte CEO said that regula regulators aren't even mentioning um, anything about splitting it up. But now with these bank failures, the, of course, the regulators are coming out of the woodworks. And of course, they're saying that you know, we need mandatory auto rotations, blah, blah, blah. So I think the Deloitte guy is delusional as far as saying there's no reason why a big four want to split up. There's plenty of reasons. And the biggest reason is regulation. And you're about to see a whole lot of it, a whole lot of it being discussed after these banks. And it's the same stuff that we see every time a company goes under, that the auditors are the first line of defense. No, the, the auditors aren't the first line of defense. The first line of defense is internal management, uh, internal executives, things like that. But of course, it's like who's the first? You know, uh, for some reason, it always falls because everybody th it always falls on the big four accounts. People think the big four accounts are there to just give all the information to regulators and issue warning signs. And what what people think is that the big four accounting firms are part of the government. They're not part of the government. Their job isn't to be the government. Um, and, and it's going to be really weird. And I'll, I'll get into it in a future episode about these bank runs and and why I think that people are being misled. But it's the same thing over and over. And this is exactly, and it's going to prove why EOI wants to do this. Because 
everybody just wants to blame the big four for any company that does poorly. And what EY is saying is we're done with the audit side because it's too hard getting business and there's too much regulation. And I think that's clear. Now, Deloitte has a different view, but their audit practice is, is smaller than, than ENYs and PWCs. So um, they don't have the same view as they do. But we'll, we'll keep you updated on the split. And we're also going to do some, some episodes coming up here about um, the economy and these bank runs. So that's the podcast for today. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure to check out the show notes for useful links.